you know, we were selling naked puts in Berkshire Hathaway this morning. Like 10 <laughs> years nice. ago, I wasn't doing that. But now, you know, I'm like, everyone's scared. Of, you know, volatility's up. Sell some puts. What are we selling puts on? Berkshire, come on. Hey, guys, JC Peretz here, founder of AllStarCharts.com. And I am joined by my friend John Najarian. John, welcome back to the channel. Great to be with you, JC. Love All Star Charts and uh, can't wait to have a conversation with you, man. All right. So listen, when we're when we're talking about football or talking about wine or, or, or good restaurants in New York, you're also like, so JC, what do you think about the market right now? Right. So we're, <laughs> even if we're not having a stock market conversation, we can't help ourselves. Uh, we have a lot of friends like that. It's really great. So I figured, why don't we just record this conversation and have this chat? Let's say hypothetically, you and I were at a you know, fine steakhouse in, in New York City, which you and I have found ourselves at plenty of times over the years. And we're talking about the the market. You know, what, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about these days? Well, um, I think about things like how people are in denial. It's not just the president and it's not just a river in Egypt. Um, the denial therein is, you know, are we in a recession? You know, we've got two major signs that we are, J.C., uh, and a whole host of uh, very smart people that have said that we are. I mean, for instance, Jamie Dimon, um, the uh, Brian Cornell over at uh, Target stores and so forth. Um, there's a lot of folks that see what consumers are doing that say we're in a recession. Um, certainly a significant slowdown. We've had two quarters of negative growth. Um, so that used to be the definition JC before people started changing it. And then we've got the two and 10 inverted for months, months, which is also, you know, something that tells us that, you know, in all likelihood, we're in a recession, but we've got a lot of folks that are in denial because they don't want to believe that they say, oh, the economy's so strong. Certain parts are, a lot of it is not. One of the things I love about my job, John, is that I get to focus on leading indicators. And as we are well aware, you and I, you got a couple couple more years on me, but we've seen enough cycles to know. <laughs> you look good, though. You look good. Oh, thank you're you. way better skier than I am. And you're, oh. you know, you've got a few years. But listen, so, you know, the, the way I see it is by the time all these economic factors and, you know, come about to me, those are the implications of price movements. By yep. my work, we're 19 months into this bear market, right? The, 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 I'm going to show this chart. John Carlo, if you want to pull it up, this is the NASDAQ. Um, down below, we're looking at the average drawdown in the NASDAQ, down 43%. The average stock in the NASDAQ is down off their 52-week highs. The new 52-week highs list peaked in February of 2021. That's when it peaked. That was 19 months ago today or tomorrow. Like literally yeah. 19 months exactly, that's when the NASDAQ advanced decline line peaked. It's when Chinese internet peaked, all the ARC stocks, biotechnology, small cap right. growth. Everyone had a SPAC, remember? All of yeah. that was February of 2021. And a funny thing, uh, Mr. Nigerian, uh, the fact that everyone had a SPAC in February of 2021, they just delisted the SPAC ETF. You can't make this shit up, John. So, no. I mean, I'm with you. The question is, are we already out of it in terms of the stock market? We can continue to be in a recession economically, fine, but we're here to make money buying and selling stocks, are we not? We are, are we out of this um, from a stock market perspective? Right. Here's, here's what I worry about. It doesn't so much keep me up at night, JC, but it's certainly something that I bet you and all your fans think about all the time too. And that is um, Europe uh, with these sanctions, because... This is a self-inflicted wound. Um, now, I, I fully understand that Russia invaded Ukraine. I'm not in denial of that. I'm not justifying that. Um, I think we might be playing right into Vladimir Putin's hands, by the way, because maybe his real plan was not to just take some land in Ukraine and get another uh, swath of land uh, back to Mother Russia. Maybe, JC, part of his plan was to basically say, well, if I invade, then those guys will probably put sanctions on me. That's okay. Most of my money's, you know, right here in Russia. Um, and 
what I will do is uh, I will cut back on oil and gas to them. I still have BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. I still have a lot of places I can sell it that don't participate in uh, you know, any of these sanctions. And meanwhile, Europe will bring itself to its knees, literally. And I do mean that. They will be on their knees begging for um, energy. And they will, JC, because under a normal winter circumstance, they don't have enough to get halfway through the winter. If, if they're lucky and it's a warm winter, they'll be okay. Uh, but just okay. Europe will not be the same Europe that it was the last few years. On the other hand, if it's cold, um, with Russia's complete shutdown now of the Nord Stream pipeline and, you know, basically pushing all that instead to China um, and uh, India, all of their energy, um, that means that Europe is going to hurt and hurt bad. Um, so what does that mean? That means in all likelihood what uh, the ECB is likely to do on Thursday is raise rates just like our Fed is raising rates which will make it even more expensive for Europeans to live. Um, and meanwhile, their cost of natural gas and crude oil uh, refined into diesel or gasoline is probably, oh, I don't know, four to five times what we're paying here. How do they deal with that? That's the big question, JC. And with that, I say, well, I don't think long-winded answer. I don't think we're out of this yet then. If Europe goes into a deep recession, which I'd say is 70% chance, deep recession, not a light one, um, then I think uh, that hits us because they're right now with China shut down, they're the second largest economy on earth. When China's open, they're the third. But right now with China shut down, they're the second largest economy on earth. And if they go into a deep recession, you know, that's got to hurt us and our stock market. Well, I mean, my question to you is, right? No, nothing you just mentioned to me is anything that's new to me, right? And I'm, I don't even watch the news. And all of those things <laughs> that you mentioned, like I get, uh, and I actually knew, and I don't, I ignore the news, you know me, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is how much of that is already priced in? Look at Austria, Austrian stocks cut in half already. Look at Poland, Polish stocks cut in half already. These are massive draws. So number one, how much is priced in? Number two, I want to I want to point to Europe in general. This is the Euro stock 600. This is the broad measure of European equities, right? Think of this as I look at Euro stock 600 like the S&P 1500, right? A broad yeah. measure of equities. Here's the peak in 2000. Here's your peak in 07. Not a coincidence that those are at the same levels. Peak once again in 15. We remember those years well. I know John, I know you do. Again in 18, again pre-COVID. And then we broke out last year. And now we're back to the scene of the crime. We're back to all of those levels. I mean, you know, I'm a technician, you know, you know, polarity, form of resistance turns into support. You're familiar. I know. Mm -hmm. So number one, how much is priced in? Number two, is this or is this not the best indicator? Because bad things happen if European stocks are back below all those former highs. But if we're above those former highs, how bad could things be? So I'll throw that right. back. And, and that's, I'll tell you, JC, we've been seeing a ton of put buying activity in any ETF that is tied to Europe um, in general. Uh, some broad market ETFs for emerging markets as well, but really yeah. European ETFs are just getting huge bets. Uh, now, how money puts? Yep. Uh, now somebody could be buying protection, which is again, something that just like when somebody buys a call. Are they protecting a short or are they betting on the upside? You don't know for sure. But in the case of Europe, especially with these charts you're showing me, JC, I look at that and I say, oh, my God, you know, we, we go, we break this, you know, Maginot line that you, you're a big French wine fan, JC. We break the Maginot line um, and we could easily see, you know, it looks like 290, 300 for that uh, Euro stocks. And man, that that's an ugly drop from where we are. Yeah, but then look at look at this one. Uh, speaking of like hanging on a cliff, this is the European hedge ETF. This is price in local currency, right? So it doesn't look as bad as if it was price in dollars, right? 
um, when you're when the denominator in the fraction continues to decline, uh, the uh, that doesn't look as bad. Right. Uh, like, right. like the yen. Right. The yen puts lip lipstick on every pig. Right. Just denominated in yen. You'll be fine. But anyway, the euro has <laughs> been uh, just as bad. And here we are. Here's a resistance in 15, 17, 18. Right. The failed breakout in 2020 before covid. And now here we're back to the scene of the crime, like literally hanging off the edge here. It's now or never. Either everything you talked about is already priced in and that was it, or we literally are just getting started. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a defeatist, J JC, but the reason I say it's not all priced in is that we haven't seen soup lines. We haven't seen, you know, we have started to see people going to the streets. I saw it in Prague this weekend, 70 to 100,000 people marched and said, we want the end of this sanctions. This is BS. We're going to freeze. We're not going to have jobs. You can't afford to feed us, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's going to happen all over Europe. Um, so that's why I worry um, what can stop that. The, I mean, we can't export enough LNG to, to get to them because they haven't built enough LNG ports, liquid natural gas. You guys know what that is. Uh, but you can get a fortune for it overseas versus here. So our guys would try to sell it as fast and as much as they can. But Europe, A, they don't have the infrastructure to take it. Um, and B, uh, who knows that we've got, I mean, right now, JC, how about this factoid? I heard it today. Um, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve here in the U.S. Um, at its lowest level in decades. Why? Because we've already drawn down 24% of our SPR. That's and that's without an emergency. You took the words right out of my mouth. Is there an yeah. energy trade here in all of this? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, there was a great energy trade at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And it lasted all the way through March when we hit, what, 124 or whatever for one on Sunday night, the future's yep. open. I remember telling my mother-in-law, I'm like, look, Gina, 130 on the future. She thought I was crazy. Yep. <laughs> and now we've seen it break down into the 80s. Right. And one of the reasons, of course, is recession fears. The other reason is China. When China um, is not consuming as much and um, when China is instead buying from Russia instead of these other sources, um, that's... Uh, another reason that crude oil demand has been curtailed for the time being. But I think, JC, I mean, just filling back up the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is a big venture that's going to take years because, again, we've taken it down 24%, yeah, and John, that's without a wor world war stock? or you know something that's an absolute emergency. But what about the resiliency in the energy stocks despite – the correction in oil that has to be I mean, I am like, you know, at this point, I feel like nothing surprises me in the market. I've seen so much shit over the years that like I shouldn't <laughs> be surprised, but mm -hmm. I actually am surprised just how strong energy stocks have been despite the correction in oil. Right. Well, and a number of them had big corrections, a number of the uh, and like you say, some bounce back. A number of the Halliburton, Schlumberger's, Transocean rig, Oil you know, those, those kinds of, you know, people that pull stuff out of the ground that work with the big multinationals and things like that. But I think overall, JC, what we're going to see is um, um, that, uh, gosh, what was it? When Buffett put down that huge bet um, in Oxy, and then he was given the green light to take it to 50%, yep. um, his ownership of Oxy. Um, and, you know, obviously it's been hitting 52 week high, 52 week high, 52 week high as it's driving high. It's the only energy stock I know of, um, of, of it's, well, there's only a few that are of its Genier. size, but Genier. there's only a few that are at the 52 week high, a bunch of them, oh. like you say, bounced back, but this one's just going zoom to the upside. So here's that Occidental Petroleum. Right. Buffett's got about twenty nine percent. So between Warren Buffett and me combined, we own twenty nine percent of Oxy. <laughs> so, so there's I love that. that. Right. So Warren's following JC in this trade, clearly. 
Right. Um, and then uh, look at real quick. I wanted to come back real quick. We talked about the resiliency and energy stocks. This is a ratio, John, of energy stocks, the XLE, relative to the crude oil futures. Right. So the stocks versus the commodity. And look where this we're making new 52 week highs right now in stocks versus the commodity. And look where the relative strength started. Same place it started a decade ago. So yep. perfectly logical place to see that relative strength. Number one. And then you mentioned Occidental Ooh. Petroleum making new 52 week highs. Warren Buffett's doing what he's doing. But I will point you also to Chevron because Warren's also been buying Chevron and uh, JC and Warren. We both together have been buying Chevron. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he reads my blog. Maybe. I I don't know. But I, I will tell you this, John. He'd be I smart to. Buffett, I watch, we, we watch all the SEC filings very closely. I'm convinced Warren Buffett's got a technician working on his uh, at his oh. shop. I, I'm telling very you. Very possibly. I mean, Some when you look at that chart. Inside, I'm like, someone's just showing looks like it looking at that chart, JC. And Chevron. it's probably your charts. <laughs> right, right, right. So this Chevron, by the way, they've raised their dividends 35 consecutive years, even when all a lot of these energy stocks had to stop raising their dividends and then they started again. They never stopped 35 consecutive years. And, and how about the fact that energy's come a long way. We've seen corrections, everything like that over the last couple of years. Great. My argument is that energy hasn't even broken out yet, John. We haven't I even agree. broken out, and I'll tell you why. People, I say that, people think I'm crazy. I was talking to Josh Brown, mutual friend of ours, last week, and Josh was like, I'm like, I don't think it's got to start. He's like, I think you're nuts. I think you're insane. How, how could you possibly say that it hasn't started yet? Well, I'll point you to the energy sector itself, literally sitting below the 08 highs, like below the 08 highs. We still haven't even taken out the 08 highs yet, John, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Occidental Petroleum. Here's the Explorers and Producers Index. And we're still below the 16 and 18 highs. Okay. And then to, to take it even one step, even way obnoxiously further, you mentioned Schlumberger and Halliburton, Baker Hughes and those, Transocean. Oil services are below their 2002 lows, John. 20 years ago, the lows. Yep. We're still below those lows. So and you and I know why. Because... Um, the incoming administration, you know, for those of you who, the incoming administration. Yeah. For, for those of you who know, um, uh, I don't agree with the energy policy at all, but knowing that the president uh, was coming in with what he thought was a mandate to take us off of fossil fuel and bring us to uh, EVs and all the rest. And I'm, it's his, you know, it's his ball. He gets to decide who's going to play and so forth, JC. So what did all the big companies do? Like you say, uh, Chevron, cut back on CapEx. Exxon, cut back on CapEx. Um, Oxy, cut back on CapEx. You guys watching this know what that means. That means they're not spending the money with Baker Hughes, uh, with uh, buying back Halliburton. Shares. They're buying back shares, John. Yep. So what happens when, you know, now that he's begging Saudi on his knees, you know, to open the spigot, what happens? And they're sitting there scratching their heads like this, JC, going, so you want us to sell the only thing that we've got that has made us what we are um, while, and in, in other words, exhaust what we've got while you won't touch yours. That sounds like you want us to kind of go away. Because after we sell all the crude oil we've got, and I'm not saying Saudi has, uh, you know, liquidated their fields, but if you were the person in charge there, you'd say, why aren't you guys drilling? Why, 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 why do you want it on us? Oh, because it's dirty. Oh, but you guys are going to burn it, right? Yeah. Well, you're still going to burn it. What does that mean? <laughs> so I think that uh, the reason that you see that XOP where it is or, or, and the uh, um, oil field service, the OIH, why you see theirs um, is because of that massive cutback um, in CapEx. They're not putting money back in. They're paying shareholders. They're buying back shares, but they're not putting money into the field. All right. So energy crisis, European disaster. What's the final trade? Well, how do we how do we profit? How do we benefit from all of that? Well, you do want to be short, I think, going into the winter. Short um, what? Short what? Did you say short, short what? what? 
the broad market. Everything goes down with this, Equity. I think. So you yeah. short equities today? You, sh- you no. fade today's rally? Nope. Today is Wednesday, September the 7th. Market's almost closed. Dow's up almost 500 points. You fade this bounce. I do fade this bounce. I fade every bounce, JC, right, right. now. But um, I don't think I position myself massively short until November. Um, there's a lot of games that'll be played between now and the election. And I'm not saying that's bad for you know, Republicans or Democrats. I'm just saying that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Fed will be loath to do much more into that final election cycle, you know, the last two months. Uh, they'll move September 21st. It will likely be 75 basis points. Um, what will make but, you change your mind? You want to be you want to be sure you want to be fading all rallies. What 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 will it take to change your mind? Um, China opening up sooner than I think. I think once Xi Jinping gets his election in the bag um, and that he is able to, again, be more or less Mao, have a lifetime job out of this, I think then he reopens China. Right now, JC, he wants to keep it shut because he wants to say to the West, look, this was the way to do it. Lock it down. And look, only 30,000 people died here in China. And it's like, Okay, look but charge, look at this charge. who's paying for all this? Yeah, look at those drops. I think China comes roaring back when it comes back. And when China comes roaring back, that's something that's a two-edged sword. It's going to be great as far as demand. Um, that's going to be bad in terms of energy. So the number one play again next year, JC, just like it was the beginning of this year, energy. Because China demand for energy will be sky high still. Russia will still be selling to them um, and to India, but I think China's additional demand on global oil will mean it's going higher. All right. All right. Well, listen, I asked you what's on your mind and yeah. you gave it to me, you know, <laughs> right? I, I, I like where your head's at with the energy. I'm with you on that. Um, sounds to me like we're on the same page. Um you know, a China, re, you know, bounce back and, you know, you know, new bull market in China. I could see that developing for sure. I got to see it first. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm not against you there. As far Again, as short, just like when the other one falls the stock market, I think if we're above 4,200 in S&Ps, I don't think you could be short. OK, but we're not, by the way, we're not right now. But if we're right. above those levels, you will not find me shorting stocks. Cool. Well, um, again, uh, I pay a lot of attention, folks, to the work of JC and All Star Charts. I, I think it's uh, a prudent person that gives themselves as much information as possible. And looking at the lines JC has drawn here, you know that's valuable. So uh, I I am not that technician, but that's why I rely on our guy AJ Monty and guys like JC Peretz over at All Star. Well, you're a trader, John, so you appreciate the risk levels and the targets yep. and everything. Like, you're no dummy. You get it. I, and I, I love that about you. And you have you bring your own skills to the table as well, right? It's not, you know, it's all about putting the pieces together. And I've learned a lot from you, particularly in the options market. Sean, as well. You know, we were selling naked puts in Berkshire Hathaway this morning. Like, <laughs> 10 years nice. ago, I wasn't doing that. But now, you know, I'm like, everyone's scared of shit. You know, volatility's up. Sell some puts. What are we selling puts on? Berkshire, come on. Why would sure. it be so on anything else, right? Especially naked. So anyway, let's just say I've come a long way. And the whole thing's an evolution, right? You're always learning. It's always a process. With every cycle, you learn something new. You make yep. new mistakes. Uh, it's all about getting up and, and moving forward. So, John, I really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate this conversation. Can't wait to get together in real life, uh, whether it be at a restaurant in New York City or perhaps will a be. slope <laughs> in Colorado. Unless we get you down here to Puerto Rico, it'll be in New York City. Um, I, I Yeah, I'm probably going to meet you in New York probably before that I'm in Puerto Rico. I got twin boys coming in a few weeks. So Puerto Rico trips right now, as fun as that might be, and it does sound like a lot of fun, a little too much fun, a little scary, but uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll have to do that next year, I promise. Okay. Thanks, right, JC. Thanks and we'll go friend. skiing too. Hell yeah.